All right, Doc, we're going to be going live in two minutes. I got you muted right now. Share it on. <laughs> okay, Brother Willie. Yes, sir. How is my lighting? Uh, let me see. You look. It looks good, man. It look. It looks the uh, the way that your videos always come out. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yours look. It looks. I good. ask because I am uh, uh, short one light, so that's what. Yeah. It look. It looks good to me. All right. So we got one minute. Ten four. So, I got you, Doc. All right. So, Doc, I'm going to put you on mute. All right. Yes, sir. All right. And I just tag you so you can share it. So, it's two o'clock. We're going to get started. Let me make sure. All right. All right, peace brothers and sisters. Thank you for tuning in to another one of our installments of I Have a Testimony. And as you see, we have with us today, the one and only our brother, brother Dr. Wesley Muhammad. And he's gonna be giving his testimony and talking about you know, his, his, his work and what he's doing and, and definitely as it relates to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So before we actually get into the actual interview family, what we want you to do is share this on your page, invite some people to actually uh, to tune in so they can hear this dynamic interview that we're about to take place. We're live on Facebook right now, and I just wanna go through some of our just announcements. So the reason why we do this, as you've been watching, as you see me quote this often, this is an excerpt from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's letter to the then president, uh, George W. Bush. And in that, all in this letter, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, as you can read what he said to the president that I'm writing you from a prison. And he was saying not a prison, is a prison without bars, but he was talking about it being a prison of propaganda, right? Because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, by those who he has called out on July the 4th, has been placed in the prison of propaganda. And he's been made and painted into anti-white, anti-Christian, and anti-gay. So we do these um, testimonies because, and ironically, not ironically, as the minister said on Saturday, he talked, he asked those who were in the audience who were in this close circle, he said, do you hear me speak negatively about these people? So that's why I strive to get people who've been blessed to have an experience with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan so they can come and give a testimony to show us that the man is the same way in private as he is in public. And I always strive to um, gather data to, to see the, the, to measure the impact of the work that we are doing. You see here, this is from a, a survey that we did, an informal survey, but nonetheless a survey. And it shows that 90% of the people who watch these testimonies live and also on our YouTube page, they say how it has helped them in their faith and it has helped them as a believer. And then another 90% say that it has helped them to gain a greater understanding of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So these are some of the reasons why we do these testimonies. Here you see somebody said that the testimonies have strengthened them, I'm reading their quote, me even more in my faith and my conviction that no matter what is going on, I'm following the right man in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and that the nation of Islam will live on. Also, many of them touched on struggles and triumphant in a very relatable way. Talking about those people who were on the witness stand, they shared their testimonies, but in their testimonies, they gave people an example of how they handled their personal trials. So now people can handle them themselves. So I'll just go through that. It talks about the benefit of the testimony. I want you to subscribe to our YouTube page, Mas46AV. 
and Moz underscore 46. That's the Instagram page. Follow us and see the videos that we're actually posting and make sure you subscribe. Also on the YouTube page, this, this is some ammunition for us. When these people are on social media talking about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as an anti-Semite, we're in the process of compiling a playlist. And what this playlist does, brothers and sisters, uh, this playlist does, it has the actual clips of Minister Farrakhan addressing many of the things that they have accused him of. So in, in, in addition to the words that you use for your defense, you have the actual words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And then using these words, you're gonna find out that many people haven't even heard the minister for themselves. And in addition to that, we're in the process of building another playlist dealing with the y'all kill Malcolm. And it's the same, it's the same thing. Many people have no idea about what really happens and they're only repeating what the media and the enemies to us in the nation of Islam uh, to the albumists of Louis Farrakhan have put out. So use these, uh, go through these playlists, watch them and post these videos. In addition to that, with this COVID, our mosque has a prayer for healing group. If anybody in your family has been affected by this COVID, uh, uh, be it health wise, financially wise, whatever it is, submit their name so we can add you all to our prayer list. And we're in the process of working to pay off our mortgage brothers and sisters. So if you know anybody, if you have the money, if you have some money you can contribute, we would greatly appreciate it. We thank every one of those who have been contributing thus far. You can donate on Moz 40, dollar sign Moz 46 on Cash App, and you can go to our website, which is www.noineworleans.com slash give and this is just a heads up inshallah on next week we're going to have uh reverend dr michael flager who's going to be here to give his testimony but right now brothers and sisters we have our brother i'm going to go back to this fly you see our brother a soldier for islam so much appreciation for this brother and what he has done and what he is doing for my for my faith as a believer so let me get this together and we're going to bring him on and we're gonna get started with this testimony. One second. Here we go. I'm about to bring you on now, Doc. Give me one second, let me get it together. Here we go. All right, here we go, Doc. Get you to unmute. So doc, you can, if you can hear me, you can put your, whoa, I just muted you back. You can turn your camera on. There we go, there we go. All right, you can hear me doc? You can hear me? Good, 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 good. Wait, let me see if I can hear you. Let me see. Whoa, unmute yourself. There we can go, you say something? So? Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, All right, my brother. So, quick, quick, yes, sir. Quick. Did you know on your um, Facebook, you have it set for just your friends versus the public? Okay, I didn't know that I'm about to take care of that now. Thank you for letting me know no, that. No Let's take care of that right now. We, cause we definitely want the world to see this. Thank yeah. you for that, that's big time. Right. So let me first say this brother. I want to say this to our guests, to, to everybody. I first met, Dr. Wesley's mind before I met the person. I'll explain to that. I'm always researching stuff and I came across this dynamic research on the internet. And it was by a brother by the name of True Islam. I couldn't find any pictures or anything, but the research I still have, it was dynamic. Man, he went through the scientists, the Master Farah Muhammad. I remember the analogy, one of the analogies you used to, to 
refute when people start talking about Mass Rob Muhammad is a white man. You use the analogy about an apple seed or something. You say if you put it in the ground wherever, it's still an apple seed. So I want to publicly first thank you, brother, for your scholarship. I want to thank you for the successful battles that you have participated in defending the validity of the teachings of the Mozambique Elijah Muhammad. And I was watching a, a small video this morning when you were in Atlanta talking about how you hate bullies and you talked about that. And brother, you know, the messenger talks about how in the universe there are stars that are in existence for a long time, but then Allah slowly moves them forward. And brother, you came on the scene for the Nation of Islam at the right time because people were really taking us to play with academically. They were taking us to play with as it relates to our theology. And a lot needed somebody that would come on there with not the emotion, but with the, with the scholarship. And you defended us successfully in the Islamic world. I've read all those debates in the so-called conscious world. And that's not a shot at the real conscious brothers and sisters. And even in the world of academia, man. So, Doc, I thank you, brother. I thank you. And it's my personal belief. I'm not, when I see your work and what you do to, to bear witness that about point number 12, I said, man, the scientists had to see this brother. They had to see. You know? So I thank you, man, for what you're going to, for what you're doing. We're going to get right to it. So uh, I think if people have been following you, they've heard a lot of your, your story and how you came to Islam. The more I do these interviews, Doc, the more I realize that each and every one of us are here for a reason in the nation of Islam. And yes. that everything that we've experienced, be it good, bad, the ups and downs, or all preparation for us to help Allah serving and our people today, right? So my question, my first question, the lead off question is, when you reflect back over your life, can you look back over your life? Are there any things that you look back at when you were a child, a youth, a teenager, that now you look back at it and it said, man, that was preparation for what I'm doing now. And if so, can you share any of that? Wow, that's deep. Boy, <laughs> and, and it forces me to start like this. First, giving honor to and praise to Allah, who came in a personal master, Fahd Muhammad, to whom all holy praises are forever due. Um, I bear witness there is no God but he. I bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is alive in power as Christ. Yes, I yes. further bear witness that the honorable brother Minister Farrakhan is his messenger Messiah in our midst today. In their names, I greet you, brother Minister Willie, and your wonderful audience on your awesome platform with Assalamu alaikum. So Please long. allow me to extend the, these opening remarks, sharing my admiration for you. All oh, praises due to you know life. when I when you hosted me in your city to this day, it was one of the best experiences I've had because it was so efficient, which is an outgrowth of your profound professionalism. Right, praise everything be you do um, is so top not so efficient and that's why even in this pandemic world that stopped so much motion mm -hmm. you were able to um, improvise and overcome and keep your motion going motion that sings the praises of the honorable brother minister Farrakhan so I Great. wanted to put that on the record um, that I am an, an admirer of yours. And I wanted to salute you for being able to readjust to this situation that nobody saw coming, nobody knew how to deal with, but you were able to keep the motion going where few people have not been able to. Now your question is, is so profound and penetrating, which I would, not expect anything less from you, Brother Minister Willie. Were there circumstances in my life that prepared me for what I'm doing now? Absolutely. I have to say that, and because you ask candid questions, <laughs> I must give candid <laughs> answers. 
So I often feel I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you, Brother Willie. That's right. That's right. You always do. And I said to my teacher, the honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan, that I often feel like a I'm trying to square a, a circle. In every endeavor I've been in, I seem to always have the tag of Maverick. <laughs> when I was in academia, I was a black Muslim in academia, where you can't be that. Mm. You can be that. You can be a Mormon, you can be a Jew. You can be gay openly and, and celebrate it, but you couldn't be a black Muslim. When I was a five percenter, I wasn't just a God, I was a Muslim God. Mm. One reason, so my journey in Islam, from the minute I, I posted my first internet post, in 1998, my first offering in terms of my mission in life that crystallized for me in 1990 and for which I have been on ever since. My mission in life is the academic vindication of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And my first offering in that regard publicly on the internet I thought it would have been more well received, the effort. I thought would have been more well received by the people for whom I saw myself as laboring mm -hmm. for the believers. Mm -hmm. But all of that is laid a base for, to really answer your question, because all of my life, this is, so you asked a question that I processed in my head, right? Yeah. I've been an orphan mm. from the Minister Willie all my life. Mm. Ran away from home. My parents died and both of them on separate occasions and I became a ward of the state. So I've been a homeless person from childhood. Mm. And I think the good that that served is it gives me, it affords me a level of freedom, right? Mm -hmm. That a lot of people don't afford themselves because a lot of people are bound by the, the social contract of the societies or groups that they are in. And so the, with those social contracts, there's a group think, thing and there's the don't rock the boat thing, but individuals, I guess, like me, who have been orphaned and, and didn't have the benefit of such social contracts, but also didn't have the mandate, the obligation mm -hmm. of such social contracts. Mm -hmm. Well, I just do, I spent my life true Islam, right? That was yeah. true Islam spent my life doing with integrity as I understood it, mm -hmm. doing what I believe the God-given mind, because God gives mind. And I, I learned that from the Honorable Mr. Lewis Farrakhan, even when I was an atheist, that God gave me this divine mind not to not use it but to use it. And so I was never restricted in my using my God-given mind. I wasn't restricted by social contract because I, I, I'm an orphan, right? Mm -hmm. But of course, in the various social bodies that I've been in, whether it's the 5%, whether it's the academy, even in the nation of Islam, you know, I, I, there's times I still feel like an orphan and there's times I still feel like I'm trying to square the circle, but I can do that 
and it does not the emotional baggage or luggage of that doesn't stifle me because I spent my life as an orphan, right? So I just, right. hey, it just is what it is yeah. right now. But I have to say this, there's a difference between true Islam and brother Wesley Muhammad. Mm. So I got a text, brother Willie, not close on this, brother Mr. Willie. I got a text from a brother not too long ago, a brother who knew, who knows and loves true Islam, right? Mm -hmm. He's a Muslim and, and he loves brother Wesley, but he sent me a text. I had been in Chicago at the foot of the Messiah for a few years by the time I received that text. And the brother said to me, he said, Doc, you went to Chicago and you got soft. <laughs> now in truth, his exact words were, you went to Chicago and you got spiritual. But I know him in the further conversation made it clear that what he's saying is, you went to Chicago and you got soft. Well, true Islam encountered the Messiah. True Islam encountered the new human being. Mm. So Wesley Muhammad had to and has to grow. The true Islam was the orphan who fa whose father was killed, whose mother died, who was homeless and didn't have any, didn't have any body to structure my character, my humanity. As a father would, as a mother would, I had none of that. And so it was okay for me to just do what I do, not fearful of the consequences. And so in my religious debates at Morehouse, Brother Minister Willie, I literally witnessed myself pulling the rug of faith out from people and sending them into spiritual crises. And I was proud of that. But the Honorable Brother Mr. Farrakhan said to me, he said, you win the argument, but you lose the soul. Wow. He said, referring to himself, I win the argument and the soul. So True Islam was happy to win the argument, they didn't care about the soul. Wesley Muhammad, a disciple of Jesus, has to be more concerned of winning the soul rather than winning the argument. That's, that's, that's powerful, Doc, and that's a testimony in itself in regards to the transforming impact of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I've heard you say when I, um, you talked about being an atheist, right? And I could imagine that during that period when you were an atheist, that when people found out you were an atheist, well, let, let me make this point first. I don't know if you saw when we interviewed Brother Sa'ad, the National Secretary, he talked Not about- Not yet, how, I intend to. You, oh, you, shout, out to about, my, shout out to my brother and colleague, Brother Sa'ad. I have man. so much respect no. and admiration for our student National Secretary. He, he said that you never lost a debate. He said that you never, even in a college, he said, he said, Doc always had that swag. But I just wanted to make that point. But going to the question, when you say you were an atheist, I can imagine that there were people, Christian, whatever faith, when they found out you were an atheist, that they tried to come to you and get you to leave that position and become a believer in God. But you talked about how it was the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan shared to you from a brother and then you watching, hearing the lecture, the knowledge of God. So my question to you is, in comparison to everybody else, what was it specifically about the minister's words that helped to get you to reconsider your position as it relates to God? Very important, and thank you. So, because that's an actual story, if I could just give the- oh, hey, listen, I got the time. Part, because that, that answers your question. I wasn't, you are right, Brother Minister Willie. People were coming to me with their belief in God, 
coming to this atheist trying to save this atheist soul and my handling of them is what made me remember when I described myself then I don't just say I was an atheist I describe myself rightly so as a arrogant bitter atheist Ooh. I was arrogant and I was bitter I was bitter because the knowledge that came to me that made me an atheist sent me so deep in my feelings finding out i've been lied to all of these years from religion and religious people it really hurt me i was mad i was deep in my feelings so i was a bitter atheist i was arrogant because people would come to me not to be real clear when i first became an atheist i wasn't a studious atheist mm -hmm. atheism didn't make me studious I didn't become studious until I encountered the teachers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I will get to that in a minute. Well, let me say, I was studious as an atheist, but not in terms of religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I studied politics, but I, I, I just didn't do religion. But Allah blessed me with the mind such that when religious people wanted to have these discussions, of course, I, I bested them, if you will. And so I was arrogant with it. That's what fed my arrogance. And so I'm going through college at Morehouse as a arrogant, bitter atheist, but who loved Farrakhan. This was 1990. Farrakhan was traveling the colleges. And so I loved his black power, self-help black nationalism message. I would just close my ear to when he would talk religion, right? So because I loved Farrakhan, as a, even as an arrogant, bitter atheist, I met Jabril, Muhammad's son, Brother Banar Kushmir Muhammad. Shout out to Brother Banar. And at the time, I had this particular discussion. And I got to say, Brother Banar, <laughs> bless his heart, <laughs> he tolerated me because I gave him some of my <laughs> arrogant atheism right but he handled yeah. his brother with such care he didn't cut me off as yeah, he yeah. could have because yeah. i was you know i gave him some of my arrogance as an atheist mm -hmm. and he would just share to me you know wisdom from the minister and one time one day he shared the right thing with me that just shook it shook me mm -hmm. because i could not argue the force of the logic is what shook me because I was getting that brother Bernard in fact one day I was giving him some of my arrogance right I forgot what it was about it he said well you know the minister said that you can put two babies on two black babies on an island by themselves and leave them alone they will grow up believing in God because they will look up at the sky as they grow and they will look around that creation and know intuitively that there has to be a creator to this now one of the reasons that was so the logic was so forceful to me was because i had a 9 a.m physics class right and right. a first year college student nine year 9 a.m no <laughs> so i'm always <laughs> brain dead in my physics class but this one subject caught my interest. The professor was teaching us how even seemingly random astronomical events follow law. So asteroids, they seem to be random occurrences, right? Wild and willy nilly, but they submit to law in order. And so when I married that, to what the minister said, it totally rocked my confidence in my yeah. atheism, because I was very confident, arrogantly so, in my atheism. That rocked it. And so I said, oh, oh my. That's what forced me to have to reconsider everything I believe in disbelief. And so, that and so and so and get it so that was the beginning of my crisis right 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 my right. second spiritual crisis the first spiritual crisis led me to atheism 
And then my atheism was shook by the words of the minister. And it, so I started studying now, studying everything. I called my mother because she, my mother was the first victim of my <laughs> arrogant, bitter atheist. She was, mom, I'm sorry. She picked me up from that meeting. She was, I was so disrespectful, brother Willie. She was the first victim Ooh. of my arrogant atheism. And I, I, I had this white Bible that I was reading and I had questions. That's what led me to seek answers that led me to the answers that led me to atheism, right? So I threw that white Bible away. But after hearing the words of the minister, and now I'm shook, and now I determine I'm gonna study everything. I ain't got no beliefs, no disbeliefs. I'm gonna study everything. I called my mother from my dorm at Morehouse. And I said, mom, would you send me that white Bible that I had? So she sent it. And I started reading the Bible. I was reading everything, right? Cause I wanted to know. And then I encountered the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. They put suck, sunk a root in me. Cause I felt so in love with the black man is God, right? So I'm studying it. Like, oh, the knowledge is right and exact, but I'm still hateful of religious institutions because mm -hmm. religious institutions had lied to me all my life. That's mm -hmm. why I was bitter. Mm -hmm. I, the knowledge checks out, but I'm mad at, because religion, and this is what, re religion locks up the mind of the believer. Ooh. That's why I hated religion. At that. Religion has to be maintained by scaring the believer from using their God-given mind. Wow. So I hated religion. I was never going to go back to religion. Even when I came to the knowledge of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I was happy being a 5%er because I didn't have to do no religion. But on that day, and I close on this, who is God from Christ Universal Temple? That's what you said. The reason that so transformed me, right? Because again, I was a lover of Farrakhan since my junior year in high school, but I love the political Farrakhan. I would close my ears to the religious Farrakhan because all religious people were closed off to me <laughs> because I got a mind and y'all not going to oppress my mind. But on that day, who is God? Ya Allah. From that day to this, I have never seen an intellectual, I've never seen a religious, so-called religious figure give such an intellectual dissertation that's right Powerful. on a religious principle like that ever before so i'm witnessing the minister talking about god but so profoundly high level mind and i left that auditorium and said if i ever do religion again I'm doing that man's religion. <laughs> and I'm striving to do that man's religion because that man exemplifies true religion, which is the marriage of the divine and the human. That's God. That's what he exemplifies, the spirit and the mind and the flesh. Wow. In unison, that's God, not warring with each other, which religion does. Religion puts at war mind, spirit, and flesh. They're mm -hmm. all competing entities. But in true religion, Islam, the three are harmonized in Farrakhan like no human being I've ever encountered exemplifies that divinity. Man, you're going to make me come up with about a thousand more questions, brother. It got so much in it. So I'm, I'm, I'm disciplined. Hey, stick man, I'm, I'm here with you. Okay. So look, this is, this, is, this is a question because I think 
this will also help our nation as well. You possess higher educational degrees. Uh, one of the highest that you have is a, a doctoral degree, right? Which you have used to academically defend the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's now, the only reason I got it. Huh? That's, That's the, only the only reason I got, got it. it. And now some believers have had the, un the unfortunate experience of sometimes running into somebody at the mosque or the study group that discourages them from pursuing education, right? So this is a three part question. The first part is, I'm gonna ask all three of you need me to repeat in my will. How does pursuing an education, be that a trade or academic, benefit our study groups, our mosque and our nation? And then what advice would you give to those who are currently in the nation pursuing some type of education or they desire to do it? And the last question is, what can those in leadership do to aid those people that have that desire rather than kill that desire? Wow. I know that's a lot. <laughs> a lot. It's more a lot quality than quantity. Mm -hmm. Those are heavy and very important questions. I was blessed to speak to the college students of our nation recently. Oh. And I shared my personal experience that you just alluded to the difficulty of mm -hmm. doing, you know, for us doing it, higher education mm -hmm. in the nation and for others, pursuing the white man's education. Mm -hmm. And that ambivalence, see our culture, mm -hmm. black Muslim culture has an ambivalence regarding higher education slash white man's education, right? Man. Both of those characterizations speak to different valuation of the pursuit of that type of knowledge. And so that's why Believers who are pursuing education often encounters very difficult circumstances because a culture has to come to terms with what is our position, right? Regarding the pursuit of, is it higher education that has value or is it simply the white man's education that has no value other than destructive. So let me back up and answer your first question. It is imperative that we understand not just who God is, but what God is. God, the black man is God, not because of a black muscle. Hmm. The black man is God, not because of the mytho mythological penal endowment. <laughs> Etymologically, man, Manu, comes from mind. Man is mind. God is divine mind. And so the two most powerful human beings on the planet earth, Master Fahd Muhammad and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, they are very small of frame, but because Master Fahd Muhammad is the wisest God to ever live, mm. He's the most powerful God that ever lived. So what point am I making? There is no being God without the acquisition of knowledge. Ooh, ooh. There is no being God, God manifests without the acquisition of knowledge. So our culture should celebrate all acquisition of knowledge. No acquisition of knowledge should ever be looked at sideways from our culture because the process of being God requires the maximal acquisition of knowledge. Now, it is not the case that the knowledge to be acquired 
to be God has to be acquired via an institution. Mm -hmm. Certainly, it's no requirement that such knowledge be acquired at one of the white men's institutions. No, that's not a requirement. Mm -hmm. It is the case that the white men's institutions are set up to make cogs into his system. So if we matriculate through his system, then we run the risk and we will likely come out of it, not a God, but a Negro. However, if we enter the system with knowledge of self already, then no one should fear that act was that attempt to acquire knowledge on our part because going into the white man's educational system with the knowledge of who the white man is but also who god is that allows us to take whatever the white man has to offer take whatever the chinese man has to offer take whatever the african take any nugget of knowledge that the world has to offer as long as I know self, God, and others, I can use it to expand my mind and my Godhood. So our culture, we must resolve this ambivalence. I believe this way, all knowledge is valuable so long as we have the first knowledge. So long as we enter a body of knowledge already having the, the first knowledge, which is the knowledge of God and devil, then any knowledge we lay our mind to can facilitate our growth yes, sir. as God and yes, sir. Our, our utility as citizens of the nation. So yes, we sir. are going to these institutions acquiring a skill set that can help build a nation, we should celebrate that. Yes. Man. We should facilitate those soldiers trying to matriculate Dealing. through these hard places, yes. these dangerous places. We should facilitate and help them rather than isolate them and make them feel like they have to choose, as I was told. I close on this. I said it <laughs> at the during the conference, and some may have felt offended, but I'm candid. And my experiences shape my Islam. That's right. But the more you know about my experiences, the more you understand how I do my Islam. And so, as a young Muslim who is also a student at Moha. I was told by my first officer, who was also a personal friend of mine and a housemate, because I stayed in that FOI house, I was told that I had to make a choice between being a student or a soldier. Oh, Allah. And I was sunk into a spiritual crisis. That was my third spiritual crisis in life. Mm -hmm. And so no student, no believer who is trying to acquire a skill set that can advance the building of a nation, no believer should ever be told that, should ever be put in such position. So we have to resolve this matter of our cultural valuation of higher education and we, but we have to keep it in its place. And that's my, my, my ending note. Mm -hmm. With all of the higher education we acquire in this world, know that higher, the highest of education is light years below revelation. Mm -hmm. The highest of education is light years below revelation. revelation. So to call the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan a scholar is a cheap in him. Oof. Because scholarship is a human endeavor. And scholarship inherently comes with a significant margin of human error. Revelation does not come with any margin of human error. 
So what Brother Dr. Wesley says, what all of our great scholars say, the best of our efforts come with an asterisk attached to it. Nothing Farrakhan says, speaking from Allah comes with an asterisk attached mm. to it. He wow. speaks revelation that has no margin of human error. So as long as we keep the epistemology in order, right? As long as we keep the knowledge hierarchy in order, then we should pursue higher education and we won't get it twisted Yo. to think that we are equal to the man of God with our degrees because we uh -huh. ain't. Brother, what you just said, that's the, the very principles that undergird what you just said are found in a message to the black man. Like the Mozambi Elijah Muhammad was not anti-education. He was anti, we going in there without the knowledge that of right. self and you just in a beautiful way. And I think we need to hear that because we're gonna need education, but it has to be balanced with what you talked about. And so when was the first time you actually physically met the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? And how was that experience? What, what, what do you remember? What stands out? Wow, brother <laughs> Willie, you, <laughs> wow. Praise be to Allah. I was in a, oh man, this is real talk. True Islam was going around the country, right? I was in and out of New York having those debates. Mm -hmm. And I was traveling the country but then a particular controversy erupted and it hurt me. Um, I was, you know, I, I, there was a campaign actually launched against me from an assistant minister in one of the cities and it hurt me. Mm -hmm. I emailed the Honorable Mr. Lewis Farquhar, just because I was in Kersu, Wakel encouraged me to. Not, I never met him. I had sent him things before. You know, I never um, had a word back. So I don't know why I would have thought this would have been different, but I was encouraged to do so. And I told him what my pain was. And within an hour, I get a call from a sister. I ain't never met. It was at the time, Sister Kim. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Like, okay. No, please hold for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I'm at my kitchen table. And I'm floored. This was about two weeks before Savior's Day. And he said, he asked me, was I going to make it to Savior's Day? And I said, yes, sir. And that saved you stay. I met him for the very first time. And that there's so much, there's so many lessons in that. Share, share one of them. My meeting with my Messiah mm -hmm. was precipitated by a painful occurrence that before that moment, if you would have, I, I would have given anything to make that have never happened. Mm, think about that. But if it never happened, look at that, man. The chain of events would have never that. happened. Look at that, man. So the Quran, Allah says in the Quran that we may hate a thing that's good for us. Ooh, but I hated that. But it was good for me. So yeah, that was when I met in a, in a very painful controversy. Ooh. And I just emailed Damn. him and, and I met him that Savior's Day. But Doc, would you, would, for those of us who are watching this, um, this interview, if we can go back and look at what you just shared. Because a lot of times we think that greatness and great experiences are gonna come on a yellow brick road. And a lot of times it comes through difficulty. And look at what, like you said, if that if you take out the difficulty, I would you say the greatness yeah. never comes down a yellow brick road. Ooh, never. Good may or set things that make me happy 
may, but that ain't greatness. Great point. Greatness, I would hazard to say, but only as one who has been listening to the Messiah teach on it. Mm. I would hazard to say that all greatness comes through hardship. <laughs> so there's a phenomenon in the scriptures of theophany, right? Mm -hmm. God's appearances to mm -hmm. his prophets. Mm -hmm. A characteristic of all of the theophanies is God appears to that human at night. And, ooh, going dark. So mm -hmm. God's appearance is the brightest light, but it comes in and darkness. Dark. So greatness, I would hazard to say with confidence, only comes through pain because to level up requires growing pain. So there has to be a source of pain. Brother. There has to be a painful cause. So in the greater the greatness, the more severe the pain. Yeah, man. So that was one of the greatest, I say this, ya Allah, the greatest benefits of being a student of the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan. And, and I say, this is where religious teachers fail, hmm. where he succeeds. Black people suffer so much because of the what we know the sources of our suffering but added right. to that we don't have the right perspective on pain oh and my, suffering oh my goodness brother when the honorable brother minister farrakhan gave the theology of pain that turned a light on that is what allows one not just to endure pain but to exhale as a result of pain. But we encounter the pain, but we rarely encounter the fruits of pain because our perspective hijacks that process. We abort the process. I understand the theology, the value of pain, only because I, like you and us, are blessed to have Jesus among us that helps us to put pain suffering in its proper perspective such that it is a help aid to our exaltation and not a hijack of our no. exaltation. Man, listen, we, we, inshallah, we're gonna take that as a, that we're gonna make that a clip because so many people, that's really how people turn atheists. You know, because they can't understand, they can't understand that pain. Like, what's the purpose of this? And how does this come from a good God? And man. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. The, bro. the way religion teaches God on one hand, yes, the man. reality of human life on the other, it yes. doesn't make sense. And they couldn't make it make sense. Ooh, you but Farrakhan me. makes it make sense because God is, is educating his people. The why of our suffering and why is the question that gets us into the mind of God. You did. God through the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and then through the most honorable Elijah Muhammad via Farrakhan is giving us the why of our suffering after which you will come out with great substance. Ooh, That's brother. the part that we don't hang around for. Ooh. Woo. The afterwards come out with great substance. There is the afterwards to suffering. But if we don't have the right perspective and we don't follow the right course, we hijack the process so we never reach the afterwards. Yo, man, the, but the people are, the, that point and what you were sharing about education, people are giving all hearts, man, in Facebook, because it, it resonates, brother. That That is what shakes people. Like you said, not being able to 
understand that. Like, yo, how could you, God, I'm- Cognitive dissonance is real. Yeah. Uh, so much of our culture lends itself, so much of our teachings, Ooh, lends itself right. to cognitive dis dissonance. It Man, does. You feel it. So, so I heard you say this um, you, on the interview with Brother Munir, and I would encourage everybody to go and uh, check out our brother's interviews. You talked about how during your study of the teachings of the Mozambique village Muhammad specifically, and other, you did this with other things too, you applied it, you, you looked at it under, I think you said the, the, the fire of investigation, right? And I heard you say how, how the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, um, when you talk about your scholarship, how he doesn't, how the, oh, I heard the minister say this about you. We were in Chicago and I felt, I felt like he was saying like, when you talking to somebody who's a scholar, they don't look at stuff like the average person. They just don't accept stuff. They wanna analyze it, right? So how has, the question is how has, uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, what has he done to encourage and free right. you as a scholar? And why do you think he has done so? When I ask, I normally have two questions in one. Bro, that question you just asked, I, I'm busting out of my seams. Praise be to Allah. Answer it. Because it, it, it goes to the answer to the question, mm. what manner of man is Farrakhan? Mm. As a bitter atheist, I came, I didn't come directly from bitter atheism to believe in these teachings. I encountered the teachings, they sunk so deep, the black man is God, it shook me. It had the effect on me that the white man is the devil had on Malcolm. It just, mm -hmm. but of course I'd never heard it before. I didn't know it to be true. So I had to study it. I was studying everything. And I said, wherever my study leads me, mm -hmm. that's where I would be. Mm -hmm. And so in the course of that, I'm presented with the teachings and while I'm presented with everybody else's teachings and I'm treating them all the same way, all of them. I'm hitting them with the fire of critical inquiry. Mm -hmm. I'm putting them all under the microscope. Mm -hmm. I wanna know, cause I don't wanna be misled again. That was my mm -hmm. brain, that, that's the bitterness. I've been lied to, misled by religion. I don't ever wanna be misled again. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tossing everything that comes to me in the critical fire of inquiry and investigation. And whatever survived the fire, <laughs> that's where I would be. The teachers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad survived the fire because I put, I submitted the teachings to that process. It's why I can stand before the world today and say, no, y'all got it wrong. Mm. The teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is not religious doctrine. I heard you say that. This is a verifiable body of knowledge. Get those words. The teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad are a body of knowledge, not religious dogma. It's a body of knowledge that's verifiable, mm. meaning every aspect of it, we can verify it. Y'all need to, in, in high school courses where you teach verifiable knowledge to students, y'all need to teach this verifiable knowledge to students because that's the level of credibility, empirical credibility that this knowledge has. The only way I can shout that from the mountaintop and prove it by Allah's grace. In every debate that I've had, Allah blessed me to prove the veracity yes, sir. of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, which is my life mission. But it's only because I, I threw these teachers in the same fire that I threw everything else in now. Now, of course, so Farrakhan. Man. 
man. You want a testimony? I'm going to give you a testimony. Uh -oh, okay, let's get to it. People like me, who think like me, who are in religion but insist on being a believer who uses his God-given mental faculties. People like me usually have a hard time in religion mm -hmm. from religious leadership because it's threatening to dogma, it's threatening to religious leadership, but because Islam, our Islam is mathematics. There is no opposition between the teachings and empirical data. The Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan, when I was a, this is Farrakhan, when I was in the academy, and Brother Willie, I loved the academy. But the academy was very, that's the right word. <laughs> it's oppressive. Mm. It, it can be humiliating, mm. but I wanted to be a shining star in the academy. I was willing to submit myself to it. And so while Mormons, Jews, and gays could proudly mm. wear their colors, as a Black Muslim, I had and was told to stay in the closet. Mm. And I submitted. So I wrote my defenses of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but I had to camouflage it in academic language. I had to give some misdirection in my work. So it, it wasn't clear that this was a Muslim believer yeah. defending Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan said, I want to free you. I want to free your scholarship. No. And they say, I want to stifle. I want to curtail. He said, the academy is imprisoning you with its language, with its culture. It's imprisoning you. And he was one trillion percent correct. He said, I want to free you. I'm going to bring you to Chicago to do your scholarship freely. Look at that. Freely. My, my initial obligation when the Honorable Brother Mr. Farrakhan brought me to Chicago, my initial obligation was to do what I love, do scholarship on a Black man being God. Yeah, uh -huh. Allah. Who does that? Ooh. And he's, he did me one better. He didn't just bring me to Chicago, bring me out of the academy and free my scholarship. He, he said, what are they giving you there? Mm. I told him, he bested it. Think about that. To, I mean, think about Hey, brother, you see and he different. let me loose to do. He never, never, as I am this, you know, recovering atheist, right? Doing what I do, a square, trying, you know, one trying to, a peg trying to square a circle at times, and it's painful. But he always, he freed me to do it, and he encouraged me, he gave me the resources to do it at a higher level than I ever did it before. Wow, look at that. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. Wow. So he, that's what he did to my scholarship. He freed it and he facilitates its growth to the highest level and it is in that process that I was 
able to organically see. See, that's what, when I was at the University of Michigan, at Michigan State, I didn't have the concept of the difference between revelation and scholarship. Mm. I didn't have the appreciation of the inherent margin of human error mm. versus revelation mm. and its lack of human error. And he did not impose that on me mm. as I'm growing in my scholarship, but looking firsthand at revelation. I said, oh, yeah, see? Revelation is up here and the highest level of scholarship is down here. Mm. So Farrakhan frees the mind. Farrakhan does not imprison the mind. That's why I love Farrakhan. That's why, again, I said, if I ever do religion again, I want to do that man's religion. And 30 years later, I'm still saying, because I'm still striving, I have not reached his religion yet. Mm. 30 years later, I'm still saying, I want to do Farrakhan's religion. If Allah blesses me on my deathbed to have accomplished something, I pray that I've accomplished doing Farrakhan's religion. Wow. You, um... What you use this terminology several times during the interview. You said like a circle in the peg. What did you say? Trying to square a circle. Trying to square a circle. And in one of the clips that I saw on YouTube, you talked about the minister's chisel, right? So in the album, Mr. Louis Farrakhan has said the last time we were at his dinner table in Chicago, he talked about how he spends a lot of time trying to mold and shape his helpers to be great helpers, right? And to be their own stars and gods, right? So can you share, because in, in Atlanta, you was like, you have been the target of, of that chisel sometimes. Can you share one, what Not you can target. share one Beneficiary. time? Beneficiary. Beneficiary, that's the word. Now the chisel is painful. That's why yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the chisel yeah. is painful. So yeah. can you share one, can you share one experience where, where that chisel, you, you were, you were the, ben how, how the chisel benefited you? You know, one, one thing that you can come to mind if you can share that. Yeah, so the one I alluded to early, where the minister said, pointed out to me the trail of dead black bodies that I leave in my wake. Yeah. When he said, you win the argument, but you lose the soul. And he mentioned that I leave a trail of dead bodies in my wake. Hmm. So I have to totally, in order to meet the divine standard that he just put before me, win the argument and the soul, but the soul is more important. I had to literally rearrange the furniture in my mind and when we represent, but we don't live up to the standard that we should. And we displease the minister. Ooh. His displeasure is a chisel. Oh, yes, sir. Even if it, he may not even <laughs> he may rebuke or he may not. He may discipline or he may not. But just knowing that you displeased him in that moment, that's a chisel because it's the worst feeling in the world, Brother Willie. Oh, I trust him. I know you know, and we <laughs> spoke. You and and you can't label for Farrakhan and not know. Mm -hmm. Not have experienced his displeasure and how traumatic it is 
I've been blessed. Now there's for from a lot of measures, this is a very short time. But for me, no, eight years sitting at the foot of Jesus. Mm. Blessed to sit at the foot of Jesus. Mm. But eight years in, never do I get the call that the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan is going to meet with us, either with the Executive Council or the research team, or he wants to meet with me. Never does that call come to me and I'm not sunk into high level anxiety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, snap. High level anxiety, right? Because I know who that man is. I know that our best righteousness is, is, is what, 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 what's the word? The filthy rag. Filthy rag in his presence mm -hmm. so his presence chisels because his presence you know in the hebrew the word for holy kadosh it means a fiery presence mm -hmm. holiness is a fiery presence and that's why in old jewish temple tradition only the high priest can go into the holy of holies and encounter god but because presumably he was the most holy and he won't die. The Israel would die in, their un, in our unholiness if we encountered the holy God because his holiness will instantly incinerate us. So only the high priest, but the high priest, when he went behind that curtain, he had to have a rope tied around his ankle Wow! because if his holiness wasn't up to par, when he encountered God, he would die automatically. Who's going to go in to retrieve the body? Nobody. <laughs> or they're dying they too. can't even go in to get a dead body. They can't even go in to get the dead body. So his body was pulled out with Man. that string. Oh now, I say God. that's Farrakhan. His presence is a fiery holiness. And his very presence chisels you. And when your humanity, which is the weaker side of God. Mm -hmm. When your humanity encounters divinity and that divinity is working on your humanity, that hurts, bro. It does, it's painful. But the reward, if we perceive it right, you see, that's where the heart comes in. And that's why the minister focuses so much on the heart. He has the heart of God. That is the end all be all. It's not your mind, not your strength. At the end of the day, the determining factor is the heart. Mm. And because he has a heart of God, everything that we who represent him, what we do, we come to him with our knowledge, right? We come to him with our skill set, all the which can be useful to the cause of Allah provided our heart is right. Yeah. None of us come to him with the right heart. None of us come to him with the right heart because the right heart is only the heart of God to help this people effectively and in the right manner requires the heart of God. So for example, when I started teaching on the chemical assault and the scientific spawning of the black homosexual phenomena, I approached that subject initially just straight as a scientist. Like, yo, this is what went down. There was no God in my initial discourse, meaning I did not preface the scientific disclosures with love for our people. Mm. But God loves all Black people, regardless mm. of the level of victimization. And the Black homosexual phenomenon is a victimization. But they're the people of 
victimization of the people of God, whom God loves. So Farrakhan and Farrakhan loves all black people. So he taught me how to love from the heart of God that is in his chest for all black people. I have to approach the subject with love for black people. Mm -hmm. I can approach the discourse of the feminization of the black man and the homosexualization of the black community like other groups do with the vitriol for gay people. And I can't do that. And we can't do that because our leader loves them wow. because God loves all black people that he traveled 9,000 miles to save. I didn't have that naturally. I did not, I, I had the science and I'm dropping. No, I did not have that brother minister Willie. I didn't because yeah, I, I did not come to this with the heart of God. That has yeah. to be bred in Ooh. us by one who has it and only one person has it. You're dealing, man. Oh my goodness. Man, so it's 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 whoo, brother, it's so much, so much in your responses. Get to this next question. So much, brother. It's like, yo, when when it's COVID is over, we got to get you to come back down to the city. So you you were part of the delegation that traveled with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to Iran a couple of years ago, right? Yes. And as you are aware, Nick in these Islamic countries, they don't take too lightly, be it Shia or Sunni, about somebody coming with a belief in Islam and a belief and a view of the Quran that's different than theirs. And sometimes you can end up being punished, you can end up being in prison, or you can end up being jailed, right? But or you were there, huh? Ex or executed. Or executed. But you were there, and the, as, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan came back and told us, that despite all of that, he still went there and told them that who y'all expecting, he came to us. So can you testify or talk about what you saw? Now, despite that circumstance, that didn't deter the minister one iota. I was jaw dropped, to be quite frank, even as a believer at that time already for 25 years. Mm. I did it's one thing to see the our minister here in America and his strength right. but to see him walk as heavy in the Islamic Republic of Iran mm. not only did he never Tuck his peculiar Islam, man. Our Islam is peculiar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With the billions of Muslims on this planet, yes. a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. Yes. Say, I bear witness, Allah came in a person, a master, Fahd Muhammad. He was in the Islamic Republic of Iraq engaging powerful, powerful people. Engaging them on what? On Allah in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, teaching them of Alfonso Allah, huh. teaching them of Bobby G. And wow. he was, he was there as what he is. Now, I hope he doesn't disapprove me of using this language, but that's that, that's, it's what it was. I hope I, <laughs> I don't get in trouble for using it, but it's what it was. He was the superior. He was. Mm. He was the spiritual superior there. And I ran. The Islamic Republic of Iran. And where others go and tuck their Islam. We saw it. We know it to be the case. He went there 
with his Islam on full display, not arrogant. Because you don't, there, there's nothing about our minister that is that. He is not that here, he was not that there. Mm. But he was God's one and only man because God has always only chosen one man at a time. Mm. And that one man left America and went into the Islamic Republic of Iran. He was still that one man mm. chosen by God. And it was profound to see because it's the international legitimation, right? Of the Farrakhan walk. Mm. It was so profound, yeah. The international legitimation of the Farrakhan walk. Don't get it twisted. Farrakhan don't walk like he walked just among Negroes, Farrakhan walk as he walks. Everywhere he goes on the planet in the most powerful of nations because there are two backing him. Mm, two hands. And those two back him, the two hands that made him, back him everywhere he goes on the planet. I was blessed to see that with my physical eyes. Mm. And I was jaw dropped by it. Wow. It strengthened my faith. It made me walk. <laughs> now, I can't walk. I can't strut his strut. Right. right? <laughs> so I'm not getting it twisted. But that absolutely strengthened me. And to know never, ever tuck Whew. your Islam in. Wow. And that's a lesson for us as believers. You don't, you don't tuck this. We, we stand on it. And the next question, if you had, to, if there was one thing you wanted people to know about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, what would be that one thing and why that particular one thing? Farrakhan is that new human being. Mm. See, you know, Allah has, has blessed me over the years to encounter a number of celebrities, some of whom I was particular fans of. And in every case, after meeting them, there was to one degree or another some disappointment. The private person doesn't measure up to the public celebrity. With the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan, Yah Allah, it's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Farrakhan, the public figure, is great. Two million people tuned in, either on July 4th or within the next Two 72 million. hours. Damn. Tuned in to that man, Farrakhan. Two million. But I swear to you, as unparalleled in its greatness is Farrakhan the public figure. So much more awesome is Farrakhan the private person. Mm -hmm. because, because it is those blessed to know Farrakhan the private person. That's where you really see God in man. Mm. So much of Farrakhan's divinity, we don't get the blessing to see from the rostrum. Mm. 
No. But when you see Farrakhan deal with circumstances, deal with people, he's inhuman, not inhumane. He's so humane to, it's, he's inhuman in how he deals with circumstances because the humanity of us is the peril of us. Mm -hmm. The humanity of us causes us to handle people, handle circumstances in one way, but Farrakhan, Farrakhan handles people, he handles insult in an inhuman way. Is there an example you can give? <laughs> Let me. They got to think. I, that's why I thought about sending these questions in advance to get you to, to think about it. Because I know. Well, well, I can, but without, I, yeah, I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because oh, where there's an insult, there's an insult too. Right? Yeah. Well, let me say this. Well, let me say this then. Because you mentioned, you made a very, I like the way you put that. You said how, like, we can't, sometimes, like, we, you, when you talked about not seeing, like in, in those private moments, you can see more of his divinity, right? So if there's one like where you may have seen the divinity come across with him showing mercy or forgiveness or encouragement. I would it, give a person though. Go ahead. Example. Yes, sir. Now be careful. <laughs> but this, Really, you know, it really did it for me. Mm. The one thing you must know about your minister, your Messiah, is he is a profoundly just human being. His level of justice it does speak to is inhuman. Because all of us, we, our ability to be just is so colored or inhibited by our ego, by our personal pain, by our personal circumstance. Mm. But I was in a situation. The Honorable Brother Minister Far kind of adjudicated over a matter that <laughs> had so many moments could have went one way due to privilege, went one way due to, you know, it was, he's not swayed by nepotism, he's not swayed by position, he's not swayed by seniority, he's only measures right and wrong mm. and experiencing that from him at a time where he's still you know he's still trying to gauge me but i didn't have any of the markers of privilege none none But that did not matter to him. So he, his justice is not a respecter of person in a way that is really inhuman. God adjudicates like that. We humans don't. Mm -hmm. We humans judge based on our, the personal space that we are in, the personal investment, the personal loss that we may suffer, that's how humans do justice. Mm -hmm. But that's not how Farrakhan does it. And I'm telling you what I know. Wow. And so, far, so the Mahdi comes and his signature act is sitting down tyrants and establishing justice in the land mm -hmm. because the, the reason the human family 
suffers under injustices because at this point, at the time that the mafia enters the world, human nature is incapable of being just, just incapable. Mm -hmm. And so God has to come to deliver justice. Wow. And God's justice, we need it. God's heart, we meet through God's man, Farrakhan, and God's justness, justness, right? His justice, we encounter through the man of God. So we don't see that from the rostrum. We, we, we haven't witnessed him adjudicate. We haven't witnessed him deal with humans in very difficult and even toxic scenarios. If you haven't seen him do that, you don't know the level of humanity that his is a divine humanity. That's why Farrakhan beyond the rostrum is the clearest Farrakhan at the rostrum shines as God's man. But Farrakhan beyond the rostrum where the cameras aren't there right. is when you see that next level of humanity in transparent fashion. Who are you dealing, brother? Oh my goodness, man. It, it, so much, so much you said and how, how you said it, man. It, and it, and it's, it is in line with why we are doing these series. And like what you just said uh, about how from, not from the rostrum, and, that, and that's the thing, because people can think that, like, yo, we are lying, but this man is like that, regardless of who this man is like that. And, and, and that's why we take it so personal. Yes. Yes. When people scandalize. Yes. Say that. No. And, and more importantly, Ooh, because he doesn't, we get more offended by their scandalization than he does yes. because he has the heart of God. But even beyond that, what is most offensive to me because of what I just said, what's most offensive, I'm offended when, when they talk slick about Ooh. my opinion, That's right? right. That's right. But, but okay, the minister says take plenty, okay. But what's most offensive is when these people presume to be the replacement oh. of Farrakhan, that presume to be a peer of Farrakhan. Not, man. Look, and this is what separates Farrakhan from all Black leaders. I could go, I could go down the list, but I won't. I'm trying to win souls and not just arguments today. So I won't name drop here, but y'all know those who think they can better lead black people than Farrakhan because they got some position, they got some knowledge. What every single, I'm going to say this. I don't have to say names because all names apply. There is not a single black leader. All of our black leaders got powerful platforms or brilliant minds or this or that. All of them have profound character problems. All of them have profound character problems. What makes Farrakhan the paramount leader among us in the seat of the eternal leader, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, is Farrakhan has a character oh, that God. none of them have. Y'all got your knowledge, y'all got your revolutionary fire and all of that and all of that is great. But none of, none of them has the character of Farrakhan. That's what makes him 
peer list. None of you, not us, so I'm talking to that audience, none of you are his peer with yeah. all of your knowledge. None of you have the character that he has. And I'm going to end this note with a lesson, one of the, that may be one of your questions I would anticipate. <laughs> One of the most important lessons mm. that I've got from the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan as a disciple of his, one that isn't just, that that, that doesn't just have intellectual resonance like, oh, that's deep, right? I can recite it from the rostrum, but one that has practical resonance if we embrace it, he said, with every gift that God gives every human being, there's a flaw that Ooh. comes with it. Oh, that mercy. So all of us have gifts. Damn. But with that gift, we have a flaw. Now, the problem is, this is the problem with great people of this world. When we realize our gift, we spend all of our effort to accentuate, to grow, to build our gift, to make our gift the source of our greatness. And that is right. But we fail to give the same amount of attention to our flaw. And what needs to happen is as we give attention to our gift, to grow our gift, we have to give attention to our flaw, to eradicate or get control of our flaw because it's our flaw that prevents us from developing into true greatness. So we are greatly skilled, but we're buttholes. We are bad human beings. <laughs> so we are good, we excel, but that's not true greatness. So these leaders out there, they, they, they got their skill set, but as transparent is their, as their great, as their gift is, with every single one of them, their, their human character flaw is equally transparent. Mm. And it smothers their greatness. And so because Farrakhan let me know, oh snap. See, I know my skill and I've been feeding my skill, but yo, that skill that God blessed you with, that gift that he gave you, just like the proton and electron in an atom. Mm -hmm. There's a flaw. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as you give attention to your gift, in order to be a truly divine human, we have to give equal attention to the flaw. Correct the flaw of our character. And that's why Farrakhan is peerless because everyone who wants his seat, they, they think they deserve his seat because of their great gift. And they got great gifts, but they also got great flaws mm. that they ain't paying adequate time and attention to. So what you give us is your greatness and your flaw. Ooh. Farrakhan gives us God in human form. Y'all can't say that. Doc, it's, it's, and it's interesting because you you answered a question that I was going to ask. I heard you mention this. Like you said how, let me look at my notes. You mentioned in, uh, I think it was in one of the interviews, you said how, to, with Brother Munir, you said how the minister generates love and loyalty. And all of what you just explained is why he generates love and loyalty. So people are like, man, why y'all... Why y'all tripping? Because I'm like, like, man, you don't understand this, man. We're not even talking about the sacrifices he made for his health to be teaching oh, us. Oh, oh, peep this, Brother Minister Willie. Peep this. And, you know, because I've seen it up close these last eight years, and it's really phenomenal. It's really, it's, it's really phenomenal on that point. 
when you, if you were to list just the, just all of the ministers, laborers, right? What they come to the table with mm -hmm. and the believers, this ain't no jailhouse religion. Mm -hmm. We, we got soldiers from the belly of the beast and we wear that with pride. That's right. But Farrakhan is a magnet for the whole spectrum of blackness in a way that no one else is. When you look at the people who come to Farrakhan from where we come from, mm. whether we come from the the penitentiary or whether we come from Princeton, mm. whether we come poor and broken as a human, yeah, or whether we come at the top of our game, all of us come to Farcon, but it's so interesting. All of us, he inspires the same level of loyalty and love across all classes Excellent. and categories. Excellent. The same profound love and loyalty such that so many of us don't, unfortunately, don't like each other. <laughs> we may not like each other because of our, we're languishing in our humanity because we have our gift, but we, we didn't, we're not tending to our flaw. And it's that flaw that makes us not be a brother and a sister to each other. It's a flaw that makes us a team of rivals. It's a flaw in us that makes us Avengers versus X-Men, right? So, but regardless of what 10 people in a room may feel about each other, <laughs> all 10 of them may le legit hate each other's guts but that one man Brother. inspires the same level of deep love and loyalty from Damn. all 10 it's really a scientific phenomenon oh to goodness. behold and no one else can do that so you gotta ask yourself what manner of man can do that. Nobody has a cross section like of that. followers like that with the loyalty. Like that, the Farrakhan has nobody does. As a fact, not just the level of loyalty, but the loyalty from the wide cross section of followers. Nobody has that. That's a fact. Farrakhan. What manner of man is Farrakhan? Well, that man, God, which is Messiah. Mm. Mm. Yo, man, it's and you know, people from outside maybe like, man, y'all, y'all praising the minister. But most of those people, if they say they believe in Jesus, they believe in Prophet Muhammad, they believe if they if those men were here, and if you really believe in them the way that you say you believe them, you'll be saying the same thing. And what we're saying is that that man. That man that we have in our midst today, he embodies all of that. So the honorable brother, Minister Parker, and as you were speaking, I, I, I heard him, mm -hmm. I could hear him in my ears. Mm -hmm. He would say to that, all praises due to Allah. are due to Allah. That's him, Because man. he is a humble man. Humble man. Your point still stands. Mm -hmm. It is not that, see, what you, it's not, yeah, all praises, Muhammad is one worthy of praise. He is that Muhammad. That's true. He is. He is Muhammad. He is one worthy of praise, even though all praises belongs to Allah. Mm -hmm. But Muhammad is eminently worthy of of praise mm -hmm. and this is the point people want praise the black leaders they want praise mm -hmm. and they think 
they deserve praise because of their great gift, because they're so smart, because they're so revolutionary, because they're so this and they're so that. So they want praise because they think they are deserving of praise because of whatever gift Allah gave them. Mm. Farrakhan don't want praise. Ooh. But Farrakhan is Muhammad. He is worthy of eminently praise worthy not because of a skill set that he's lording over the people he's worthy of praise because he has above and beyond his knowledge above and beyond his skill he has the a divine character he has god's character growing in him and that's what separates him from every black person presuming, posturing for leadership among black people. We all got knowledge, we all got gifts, but none of us got the character of God growing in us such that we reflect God's posture, God's spirit, God's love for black people. No one has that before. No, man. and and. And like you said, like there was some, there was some stuff you wanted to share, but you know that that it, this is not the, the this is not the uh, platform. And think about all of those stories that are about private, personal stuff where you see his kind of like some people you have to be there to witness it. It's like yo, this I'm telling you. So it's two we questions. We are not loyal. Get it? We are not so loyal. The loyalty y'all see for Farrakhan from the Muslims. It's not because he gives great speeches. Yes. That impressed y'all. Yeah. Now, that may have been the beginning of this journey for us. That's an excellent point. But brother. his That's great speech, it inspires admiration. Okay. And y'all, we love him too. The loyalty that we have from him, it, it's not because of speeches. Ooh. We know Farrakhan the man. It's Farrakhan the human being that inspires the loyalty that he has, Brother. not the speeches. Brother, that point- Oh, right. can none of y'all put it down like Farrakhan Man. puts it down. But see, like what you just, you just, ca in a, you just cap, in a capsule, you, what you just said, it, it's not the, it, the speech is deaf, but man, it's, it's when you see the man, you like, oh my goodness. It's brother. the human being that is Muhammad Ooh. worthy of praise. Yeah, man. So I hate when people judge the minister, presume to critique a speech of his, thinking that you are qualified to assess God's man. this man. You ain't, I ain't qualified to assess this man because his it's his humanity that makes him Muhammad. Mm. So put your humanity by his. See, let's have that context. Yeah, yeah. He don't, he would not want that because you know, it's not a contest, but us, his helpers, Listen. who dealing with these Negroes, yeah. right? We, we get offended more than he does. Yes, we do. He, he doesn't. He don't. He, he Sometimes. Forget. Man, because we can get so reckless, man. And a man that has 62 years of consistent, Whew. not just service, but suffering for black people. 62 years. He has every right to take very personally the disrespect, the disregard, the dismissal. The niggas talking about us, where's Farcom? Nigga, where was you these last 43 years in particular? Nigga, where was you? <laughs> Asking where is Farrakhan? You uh, some tiny. He ain't never been some tiny. As at He's all. Been consistent. You've been flip flopping. Oh. You've been readjusting. Oh, He's, you be coming and going. Oh. Yo. He has been so consistent oh. in giving guidance. So when a circumstance hits the earth, <clears throat> he's already given guidance for it. Yo, brother. 
Yo. Archon was already there. He already spoke to it. But <clears throat> you and we treat him as a speech mm. to turn on and off, to accept or reject, as if we got that option. Brother, brother, you listen. Doc, you got to go back and watch this interview, man, because I know I am. Lord, have mercy. And it's two questions that we're going to close out, but I got to make these two points to show to also to add to that. Look at how the minister, he mentions it in his letter that he wrote to like Jewish um, heads of these organizations, ADL. Here these people are lying on the minister, calling them anti-Semitic. And he tells the, he, he instructs the, the, uh, the, the, the research group that in your research, he said, don't use anybody who they claim is anti-Semitic. And we know how they falsely throw that, that label on people. Well, look at the heart of this man. Like, that's like saying I'm battling my enemy and just because he, I'm not going to use this hammer. No, we're in a battle, but look at the heart of him. And in addition to that, in his last point, the minister, 62 plus years, we put up the uh, Don Lemon interview and many of the comments are overwhelmingly positive. People are shocked to hear the minister talk about his health condition. They're like, man, this man is dealing with that. Like he mentioned last, last week, his organs, and he's still out there, never complain. That's why it's like, it's hard for me to hear somebody say something and I'm going to be quiet. <sighs> Bruh, not you, but us. Yeah. We fall into financial difficulty and we fall back. Fall back. We fall into marital <laughs> difficulty and we got to give up the fight. This man, they has been burned at the stake. They tried to burn him at the stake. And except when he was physically in the hospital, there has not been a pause in his labor for black people. None of us or those whoever, I don't want to, anyone, no one posturing for position can claim being chemically assaulted Ooh. and attempt to burn you at the state to, as a test to see if you say who you say you are, Brother Dr. Wesley, I right? You say you so and so. I'm going to burn you at the stake to see if your word is what it is. That ain't happened to me. None of us got that experience. None, brother. He does, but you won't know it because you don't see it physically because he's shining like the sun. And you don't experience in his stopping or abandoning his post. Ooh, right. We know it because he shares it with us. And I'm gonna close on this to your, your point of how he, you know, the private Farrakhan is no more an anti-Semite than the public Farrakhan. The public Farrakhan isn't a hater. The right. private Farrakhan isn't a hater. So you've got, for example, Alan Dershowitz, who is among those who not just slandering the minister, he is using his legal craft to make a case against our minister to get him arrested. That's the plan of Mr. Dershowitz. But the Honorable Brother Minister Farcon, who is the victim of that slander, the victim of that crime, we cannot, in response to such slander, response to such plotting, we can't get in the gutter in handling Mr. Dershowitz. Mm -hmm. We can't character assault him, even though he is a, a perfect messenger for such slander because character-wise, character 
he can be easily impeached. Mm -hmm. But the minister is so high in how he handles even his enemies. And he requires that same height from us who would represent him. So we can't attack persons even when they are so reckless and out of bounds and how they handle our minister. He does not allow us to get in the gutter with his enemies, mm -hmm. even when they are easily dragged through the mud. He will not allow us on a private, much less personal level to get in the mud and do any mud slinging. That's the character of Farrakhan, even towards his enemy. I mean, who does that? I don't, <laughs> you know, we don't. We don't handle our enemies mm -hmm. with the with dignity. We don't, brother. That that that's that's not even in our mental framework. That we don't we handle our ops, right? With yeah. dignity. No, we 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 pray for COVID on our ops. <laughs> We do. Man. But Farrakhan handles even his enemies with right. dignity and requires us who will seek to represent him to, <clears throat> to handle his enemies with Ooh, dignity. Brother. Man, listen. Oh, Doc, you, you teaching, man. Listen. And I'll share this and I'm going to ask these last two, this, ask this last, this last question. Now, bear witness to what you said. We were at one time in a hotel at the dinner table with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the city. And the minister asked one of the student ministers about this big pastor in the city. With a huge smile on his face, the minister asked him. And the brother began to start talking about how one of the pastor's uh, members, son was attending one of our local MUIs. And the brother was, was about to share with this student minister some dirt allegedly that was going on in this pastor's church. Before the brother can get that story out, the minister stopped. He said, let me stop you right there. He said, always be careful about a man that comes from another man's house with mess. And he said, sometimes you deal with people and they might just throw it on you before you can stop. Them. He said, but when they do, don't feed into it, don't say anything, change the subject. Now, the minister told him to this and to us about a pastor who the minister had said had Co he had work collaborated with the president at that time to not work with the minister. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, this, this is, he's saying not to do this to somebody who, who has already drew a line in the sand to be with the enemy of him, but that's Farrakhan. That is Farrakhan. That's him. So that's last Farrakhan. two questions. One, uh, what you were in attendance on July 4th. And so I want to get your input. What do you see as the significance of that address? And and then close out on why do you think it is important for people to testify about the minister? Like, cause I've, I've come into contact with some people and they're kind of hesitant about coming on the show and testifying. And before you get into that, we've had up to, we got up to 190 people watching this live on uh, Facebook. That's the largest that we've ever had. For those people that are in the Facebook chat, so please you. leave some comments like, what did you learn from Brother Wesley, Doctor Brother Doctor Wesley's testimony? What stood out to you? Why it stood out to you? What did you learn about the minister that you didn't you didn't learn before? Don't worry about. I don't, I don't want to type a lot of stuff. Type what's ever on your heart, but we need you to post. What are you gaining from this testimony? Go ahead, Doc. You get those two questions. So one, what do you see is the significance of his talk, his uh, his his, his, his the, the words he shared on the, the lecture on last week? And why should we testify about the Honorable Minister Louis Farr? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, praise for loss to Allah. First, I want, you know, July 4th was epic and uh, in a sense, it demarcates time before July 4th and after July 4th. I first want to draw our attention to did you see your minister? No, I mean physically. Mm. Did you see the glow of that man? Such that people didn't believe, and they shared it with me, that he was sheltering in place all of this time. But I can tell you, he was. 
the honorable brother Minister Farrakhan has taken shelter in place seriously. Mm. But when we saw him, it looked like he was sun kissed by Arizona, mm. that he was uh, quarantining outside in Phoenix, Arizona. That's not insignificant that this man walked out of three months of shelter in place, walked out glowing like the sun, majestically. That is not insignificant. God wants us to not just hear, to see his son, see who is speaking to the world. So that's point one. Mm -hmm. The minister he drew, you mentioned the language, drew a line in the sand. He said, we're not taking your vaccines. Mm. And if you come to force it on us, you are declaring war. The minister gave instructions to continue our shelter in place and the wearing of the mask while the country is reopening mm. and black people, everybody's tired of sheltering in place and there's videos and there's knowledgeable people telling us why we should not wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And even some Muslims have been bitten, fallen victim to those persons who have convinced us why we should not wear a mask. But the Messiah came before the world and said, regardless of what states are doing, regardless of what the federal government is saying, keep your mask on. And if we, God took that thought from me. So, <laughs> so the minister drew several lines in the same, who are the true believers? Who will, while the world is going maskless, who will follow Farrakhan's instruction mm. to continue sheltering in our chambers, mm. to continue wearing the mask because the virus is as real, even more real today than it was March 2nd and March 3rd. Mm. So the, the line is drawn in the sand for us believers, for black people. Can we recognize divine guidance and save our life? Mm. And the line was drawn in the sand. The government is coming with their military mm. to try to force black people to take this vaccine. And Alan Dershowitz said that the state has the right to drag us to the doctor's office and have him plunge a syringe in our arm against our will. Mm. This is what they intend for us. It was the honorable brother Minister Farrakhan, the Messiah, who put it to America like this. You, if you tried that, that is tantamount to a declaration of war, war against black people. So we have to measure up. Measure up. To that, we have to come to and be willing to stand at that line in the sand and respond accordingly. So there was no going back to pre-July 4th. Mm. Everything we do and don't do will be judged by 
how much it is or is not in accord with what that man said on July 4th. Mm. The criterion, the criterion wasn't the speech. The criterion was the man. Mm. He is the criterion, Mm. the determiner of right and wrong. And what he gives determines life and death. Mm. Man, Doc, this is, yo, for, for those who, who are watching this, please share this and encourage other people to actually share this as well because a lot, a lot of work through our brother, you shared a lot of stuff, man. And, and you are seeing the transformation, you know, from true Islam, to Dr. Wesley Muhammad. You know, and they talk about in the scripture after Moses had came back from meeting the presence of God, he was his, his face was beaming, brother. And I see it, man. And 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 right. brother, this was a lot. very powerful. And the responses, the responses in the uh chat room were actually seeing it. And those somebody would text me. If they text me in them, I'll, I'll I'll screenshot it and send it to you. But if you get the opportunity, go in, uh check and see what the people's responses. So thank you, my brother. And uh man, thank, thank you. you. You in, and we're gonna inshallah upload this on YouTube. And once we upload it on YouTube, I'll send you the link. But I would definitely like, you know, a lot of times you're in you're in the process of doing this. So when you get the opportunity to go back and watch, I would like to see what you see how Allah has blessed you to say because you took some very profound statements in 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 aspects about the minister, and Allah bless you to put it in very short, very like short one or two liners, man, that it just filled with something where it really captures the essence of what we're saying and it's straight, it's straight to the point, man. Praise belongs to a lot. Thank you, I so enjoyed this. And I have to close reiterating what I said in, in the beginning because it's important, mm-hmm. Brother Minister Willie. This pandemic stopped mm-hmm. so much motion, mm-hmm. bad motion, mm-hmm. but even good motion. Mm-hmm. But you continue motion. So we are blessed to have these testimonies. We're blessed to have the courses, the knowledge of Master Fard Muhammad. Mm-hmm. Thank you, dear brother, for not letting this pandemic stop your help Praise be of the Allah. honorable brother Minister Farrakhan and the cause of Allah. Praise be to Allah, man. Thank you. And I'm just great work, man. Listen, bro, this, this, this is, this was good. This was, this was, this was good. I'm just going to share this screen because I want to do these last announcements for those people that are on. I can't keep stressing this enough. Please take the time and leave some comments. Leave more than one comment. However many comments you want to leave, leave them. We want to hear your feedback. What did you gain from this? And inshallah on next, uh, let me move this over here. I don't know. People might can see it. Inshallah, next Sunday, we're going to have a man who the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speaks very high of, Reverend Dr. Michael Flagan. Yeah, you see, he's a That's Caucasian. Powerful. He's, huh? Yeah. That's powerful. Uh, he's going to give his testimony and tune in because all of this, as we started off talking about, is to help break our minister and keep him out of this prison that they're trying to put him in. So, you know, we were inspired to just kick off this campaign, sending messages to YouTube, telling them not to take the messages of the ministers off. Not that we, we know that that's their platform, but damn it, if 70 some percent of black people use YouTube, 69% of the millennials who use YouTube are black, how can we allow them to even talk about removing the ministers' messages because of a small segment of this so-called Jewish community? Yeah, we have our own platforms, but damn, we should at least go down in history saying we're going to say something when you're trying to take our man off there because, you know, it, that's one of the platforms that helped to get him out of prison. So to me, and I'll let you, I say you want to chime in. No, 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 I don't. I'm listening. To not say something is to basically say, put him back in the prison. That's right. To not say something, if a cassette tape could, could create a community in London, what are these YouTube videos doing? Excellent, this, excellent all, example. 
all of the celebrities, the football players, the basketball players, they are finding out the minister not by going through the mosque because of a YouTube video, or Instagram video. So we got to say something, right? We got to say something. And if they start with the minister, then who's next? All of the mosque right. study groups, all of your right. videos, Dr. Boyce Watkins, Sister Vicky. So, yo, man, we got to say something. And in the meantime, we can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. So in the meantime, while we're telling them not to take the minister's messages off, we can be promoting and pushing our people to our platforms and working to build our own YouTube. Great, great point. So any other, any closing words, Doc? We could have did this for hours, man. And no, your closing words were the best closing words. May Allah continue to bless you. So thank you all. And I, 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 I'll send you some messages. Yo, man. Yo, thank you, brother. And may thank Allah continue you. to bless you. Each and every one of you all, I salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.